In 2006, the world's greatest piece of fan fiction was written. Consider this, the feature-length adaptation. Part one of two, part two coming soon. Featuring Sorrow TV. So turn off the lights, get comfy. It's story time. My Immortal. Hi, my name is Ebony Darkness Dementia Ravenway. <laughs> and I have long ebony black hair. That's how I got my name. I'm a vampire, but my teeth are straight and white. I'm also a witch, and I go to a magic school called Hogwarts in England, where I'm in the seventh year. I'm a goth, and I wear mostly black. I love Hot Topic, and I buy all my clothes from there. A lot of preps stare at me. I put up my middle finger at them. Hey, Ebony! I shouted. I looked up. It was Draco Malfoy. What's up, Draco? I asked. Nothing. I said shyly. But then... I heard my friends call me, and I had to go away. Chapter 2. Author's Note. Thanks to Bloody Tears 666 again for helping me with the chapter. By the way, prep stop flaming my story, okay? The next day I woke up in my bedroom. I opened the door of my coffin and drank some blood from a bottle I had. I got out of my coffin and took off my giant My Chemical Romance t-shirt, which I use for pajamas. Instead, I put on a black leather dress, a pentagram necklace, combat boots, and black fishnets. I put on four pairs of earrings in my pierced ears and put my hair in a kind of messy bun. My friend Willow, author's note, Raven, this is you, woke up and then grinned at me. She put on her Marilyn Manson t-shirt with a black mini, fishnets, and pointy high-heeled boots. We put on our makeup, black lipstick, white foundation, and black eyeliner. OMFG, I saw you talking to Draco Malfoy yesterday, I said excitedly. Yeah, so, I said blushing. Do you like Draco? I asked as we went out of the Slytherin common room and into the Great Hall. <laughs> no, I so f***ing don't, I shouted. Yeah, right, I exclaimed. Just then, Draco walked up to me. Hi, I said. Hi, I replied flirtily. Guess what, I said. What, I asked. Well, good Charlotte are having a concert in Hogsmeade. I told her. <laughs> oh my f***ing god, I screamed. I love Good Charlotte. They are my favorite band besides My Chemical Romance. Well, do you want to go with me? I asked. I gasped. Chapter 3, Author's Note. Stop flaming the story, preps, okay? Otherwise, fangs to the gothics people for the good reviews. Fangs again, Raven. On the night of the concert, I put on my black lace-up boots and high heels. Underneath, there were ripped red fishnets. Then I put on this black mini dress with all of this corset stuff. I put on matching fishnets on my arms. I straightened my hair and made it look all spiky. I felt a little depressed then, so I slid open one of my wrists. Oh my god! <laughs> As you do. I read a depressing book while I waited for it to stop bleeding, and I listened to some good Charlotte. I painted my nails black and put on tons of black eyeliner. Then I put on some black lipstick. I didn't put on foundation because I was pale anyway. I drank some human blood, so I was ready to go to the concert. I went outside. Draco was waiting there in front of his flying car. He was, <laughs> he was wearing a simple plan t-shirt. They would play at the show too. Baggy black skater pants, black nail polish, and a little eyeliner. Author's note. A lot for cool boys were it okay. What? Hi, Draco, I said in a depressed voice. Hi, Ebony, I said back. We walked into my flying black Mercedes Benz. The license plate said 666. And flew to the place with the concert. On the way, we listened excitedly to Good Charlotte and Marilyn Manson. We both smoked cigarettes and drugs. <laughs> when we got there, we both hopped out of the car. We went to the mosh pit at the front of the stage and jumped up and down as we listened to Good Charlotte. Joel is so fucking hot, I said to Draco, pointing to him as he sang, filling the club with his amazing voice. Suddenly, Draco looked sad. What's wrong? I asked as we moshed to the music. Then I caught on. Hey, it's okay. I don't like him better than you, I said. Really? <laughs> I asked sensitively as I put my arm around her, all protective. Really, I said. Besides, I don't even know Joel, and he's going out with Hillary f***ing Duff. I f 
I hate that little bitch, I said disgustedly, thinking of her ugly blonde face. <laughs> the night went on really well, and I had a great time. So did Draco. After the concert, we drank some beer and asked Benji and Joel for their autographs and photos with them. We got good Charlotte concert tees. Draco and I crawled back into the Mercedes Benz, but Draco didn't go back into Hogwarts. Instead, he drove the car into the Forbidden Forest. Chapter four. I said, stop flaming, okay? Ebony's name is Enobi, not Mary Sue, okay? Draco is so in love with her that he is acting different. They knew each other before, okay? Draco, I shouted. What the f do you think you're doing? Draco didn't answer, but he stopped the flying car and he walked out of it. I walked out of it too, curiously. What the f***ing hell, I asked angrily. Ebony? He asked. What? I snapped. Draco leaned in extra close, and I looked into his gothic red eyes. He was wearing color contacts, which revealed so much depressing sorrow and evilness. And then suddenly, I didn't feel mad anymore. And then, suddenly, just as I, Draco kissed me passionately. Draco climbed on top of me, and we started to make out keenly against a tree. He took off my top, and I took off his clothes. I even took off my bra. Then he put his thingy into my you-know-what, and we did it for the first time. Dear God. Oh, 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 I screamed. I was beginning to get an orgasm. I started to kiss everywhere and my pale body became all warm. And then... What the hell are you doing, motherfuckers? It was Dumbledore. Chapter 5. Author's Note. Stop flaming. If you flame, it means you are prep or a poser. The only reason Dumbledore swore is because he had a headache, okay? And on top of that, he was mad at them for having sex. P.S. I'm not updating until I get five good reveals. Dumbledore made, and Draco and I follow him. He kept shouting us angrily. <laughs> you ludicrous fools! I shouted. I started to cry tears of blood down my pallid face. Draco comforted me. When we went back to the castle, Dumbledore took us to Professor Snape and Professor McGonagall, who were both looking very angry. They were having sexual intercourse in the Forbidden Forest! He yelled in a furious voice. <laughs> Why did you do such a thing, you mediocre dunces? Asked Professor McGonagall. How dare you? demanded Professor Snape. And then Draco shrieked, Because I love her! Everyone was quiet. Dumbledore and Professor McGonagall still looked mad, but Professor Snape said, Fine. Very well. You may go up to your rooms. Draco and I went upstairs while the teachers glared at us. Are you okay, Ebony? Draco asked gingerly. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I lied. I went to the girls' dorm and brushed my teeth and my hair and changed into a low-cut black floor-length dress with red lace all around it that had black high heels. When I came out, Draco was standing in front of the bathroom. He had started to sing, I Just Wanna Live by Good Charlotte. I was so flattered, even though he wasn't supposed to be there. We hugged and kissed. After that, we said goodnight, and he reluctantly went back to his room. Chapter 6 Shut up, preps, okay? P.S. I won't update until you give me good reviews. The next day I woke up in my coffin. I put on a black miniskirt that was ripped all around the edges, and a matching top with red skulls all over it and high-heeled boots that were black. I put on two pairs of skull earrings and two crosses in my ears. I spray-painted my hair with purple. In the Great Hall, I ate some Count Chocula cereal with blood instead of milk. And a glass of red blood. Suddenly, someone bumped into me. All the blood spilled all over my top. Bastard! I shouted angrily. I regretted saying it when I looked up. I was looking into the pale white face of a gothic boy with spiky black hair and red streaks in it. He was wearing so much eyeliner that it was going down his face and he was wearing black lipstick. He didn't have glasses anymore 
and now he was wearing red contact lenses just like Draco's, and there was no scar on his forehead anymore. He had a manly stubble on his chin. He had a sexy English accent. He looked exactly like Joel Madden. He was so sexy that my body went all hot when I saw him. Kind of like an erection, only I'm a girl, so I didn't get one, you sicko. I'm so sorry, I said in a shy voice. That's all right. What's your name? I questioned. My name's Harry Potter, although most people call me vampire these <laughs> days, I grumbled. <laughs> Why? I exclaimed. Because I love the taste of human blood, I giggled. Well, I am a vampire, I confessed. Really? I whimpered. Yeah, I roared. We sat down for a while, then Draco came up behind me and told me he had a surprise for me, so I went away with him. Chapter 7. Bring me to life. Author's note. Well, okay guys, I'm only writing this because I got five god reviews. And by the way, I won't write a chap next chapter till I get tin good vons. Stop flaming or I'll report you. Ebony isn't a Mary Sue, okay? She isn't perfect. She's a Satanist. She has problems and she's depressed for God's sake. Draco and I held our pale white hands with black nail polish and went upstairs. I was wearing red Satanist sings on my nails in red nail polish. Author's note. See, does dat sound like a Meru Sue to you? I waved to Vampire. I guess he was jealous of me, that I was going out with Draco. Anyway, I went upstairs excitedly with Draco. We went to his room, and I locked the door. Then... We started Frenching passively. Then we took off each other's clothes enthusiastically. He felt me up before I took off my top. Then I took off my black leather bra, and he took off his pants. We went on the bed and started making out naked. Then he put his boy's thingy in mine, and we had sex. See, is that stupid? Oh, Draco, Draco, I shouted while getting an orgasm, when all of a sudden I saw a tattoo and I had never seen before on Draco's arm. It was a black heart with an arrow through it. On it, in bloody goth writing, were the words, Vampire. I was so angry. You bastard, I shouted angrily, jumping out of bed. No, no, but you don't understand, Draco pleaded. But she knew too much. No, you f***ing idiot, I shouted. You probably have AIDS anyway. <laughs> I put on my clothes all huffily and then stomped out. Draco ran out even though he was naked. He had a really big you-know-what, but I was too mad to care. I stomped out and did so until I was in the vampire's classroom, where he was having a lesson with Professor Snape and some other people. Vampire Potter, you mother f Chapter 8. Author's Note. Stop flassing, okay? If you do, then you are a prep. Everyone in the class stared at me and then Draco came into the room, even though he was naked, and started begging me to take him back. Ebony, it's not what you think! He screamed sadly. My friend Bloody Mary Smith smiled at me understandingly. She flipped her long, waist-length gothic black hair and opened her crimson eyes like blood that she was wearing contact lenses on. She had pale white skin that she was wearing white makeup on. Hermione was kidnapped when she was born. Her real parents are vampires, and one of them is uh, a witch, but Voldemort killed her mother and her father committed suicide because he was depressed about it. She still has nightmares about it, and she is very haunted and depressed. It also turns out her real last name is Smith and not Granger. Since she had converted to Satanism, she is in Slytherin now, not Gryffindor. What is it that you desire, you ridiculous dimwit? Snape demeaned angrily in his cold voice, but I ignored him. Vampire, I can't believe you cheated on me with Draco, I shouted at him. <gasps> I don't know why Ebony was so mad at me. I had went out with Vampire. I'm bi, and so is Ebony, for a while, but then he broke my heart. He dumped me because he liked Brittany, a stupid preppy f***er. We're just good friends now. He'd gone through horrible problems, and now he was gothic. 
Haha, <laughs> like I would hang out with a prep. But I'm not going out with Draco anymore, said Vampire. You're f***ing right. F*** off, you bastard, I screamed. I ran out of the room into the forbidden forest, where I had lost my virility <laughs> to Draco. And then I started to bust into tears. Chapter 9. Author's Note. Stop flaming, okay? I didn't read all the books. This is from the movie, okay? So it's not my fault if Dumbledore swears. Besweeds, I said he had a headache. And the reason Snap doesn't like Harry now is because he Christian and Vampire is a Satanist. My Chemical Romance rocks. I was so mad and sad, I couldn't believe Draco for cheating on me. I began to cry against the tree where I did it with Draco. Then, all of a sudden, an horrible man with red eyes and no nose and everything started flying towards me on a broomstick. He didn't have a nose, basically like Voldemort in the movie, and he was wearing all black, but it was obvious he wasn't gothic. It was Voldemort! No! I shouted in a scared voice, but then Voldemort shouted, Imperius! And I couldn't run away. Crookshanks! I shouted at him. Voldemort fell off his broom and started to scream. I felt bad for him, even though I'm a sadist, so I stopped. Ebony! I yelled. Thou must kill Vampire Potter! I thought about Vampire and his six hour eyes and his gothic black hair, and how his face looks just like Joel Madden. I remember that Draco had said I didn't understand, so I thought, what if Draco went out with Vampire before I went out with him and they broke up? No, Voldemort, I shouted back. Voldemort gave me a gun. No, please, I begged. Thou must, I yelled, if thou dost not. Then I shall kill thy beloved Draco! How did he know? I asked in a surprised way. Voldemort got a dude you're so retarded look on his face. I hath telekinesis! He answered cruelly. And if you doth not kill Vampire, then thou know what will happen to Draco! He shouted. Then he flew away angrily on his broomstick. I was so scared and mad I didn't know what to do. Suddenly, Draco came into the woods. Draco, I said, hi. Hi, he said back, but his face was all sad. He was wearing white foundation and messy eyeliner, kind of like a pantogram. Get it? Between Joel Madden and Gerard Way. Are you okay? I asked. No, he answered. I'm sorry I got all mad at you. But I thought you cheated on me, I expelled. That's okay, he said all depressed, and we went back into Hogwarts together making out. Chapter 10. Author's note. Stop it, you gay Fs. If you do not like my story, then f*** off. P.S. It turns out Beludi Mary isn't a muggle, a furt owl, and she a vampire are evil. That's why they moved houses, okay? Okay. I was really scared about Vladimort all day. I was even upset, went to rehearsals with my gothic metal band, Bloody Gothic Rose 666. Draco and Vampire were depressed, so they weren't coming, and we wrote songs instead. I knew Draco was probably slitting his wrists. He wouldn't die because he was a vampire too and the only way you can kill a vampire is with a C-R-O-S-S. -S. There's no way I'm writing that. Or a steak. And Vampire was probably watching a depressing movie like The Corpse Bride. I put on a black leather shirt that showed off my boobs and tiny matching miniskirt that said simple plan on the butt. You might think I'm a slut, but I'm really not. We were singing a cover of Helena, and at the end of the song, I suddenly bust into tears. Ebony, are you okay? Bloody Mary asked in a concerted voice. What the fuck do you think? I asked angrily. And then I said, well, Voldemort came, and the f***ing bastard told me to f***ing kill Harry. But I don't want to kill him, because he's really nice, even if he did go out with Draco. 
But if I don't kill Harry, then Voldemort will kill Draco. I burst into tears. Suddenly, Draco jumped out from behind a wall. <laughs> Why didn't you f***ing tell me? <laughs> I shouted. How could you, you, you f***ing poser muggle b***h? See, is that out of character? I started to cry and cry. Draco started to cry too, all <laughs> sensitive. Then he ran out crying. We practiced for one more hour. Then suddenly Dumbledore walked in angrily. His eyes were all fiery and I knew this time it wasn't because he had a headache. What have you done? He started to cry wisely. See that's basically not swearing and this time he was really upset and you will see why. Ebony Draco has been found in his room. He committed suicide by slitting his wrists! What?! Chapter 11 Author's note I said stop flaming you preps. See if this chapter are stupid 11111 I delves with really serious issues. See for yourself if it's stupid BRW fangs to my friend Raven for helping me. No, I screamed. I was horrified. Baludi Mary tried to comfort me, but I told her to f*** off. And I ran to my room crying to myself. Dumbledore chased after me, shouting, but he had to stop when I went to my room because he would look like a perv that way if he went in. Anyway, I started crying tears of blood and then I slit both my wrists. They got all over my clothes, so I took them off and jumped into the bath angrily while I went to put on Lincoln Park at full volume. I grabbed a stake and almost stuck it into my heart to commit suicide. I was so fucking depressed. I got out of the bathtub and put on a black low-cut dress with lace all over it, sandly. What? I put on black high heels with pink metal stuff on the ends and six pairs of skull earrings. I couldn't believe this. Then I looked out the window and screamed. Snap was spying on me and he was taking a videotape of me and Lupin was masticating to it. They were... <laughs> masticating is chewing, by the way. Yep, that's... yep. <laughs> And they were sitting on their broomsticks. Ooh, you f***ing pervs. Stop looking at me naked. Are you pedos or what? I screamed, putting a black towel on with a picture of Marilyn Manson on it. Suddenly, Vampire ran in. Abracadabra! He yelled at Snape and Lupin, pointing his womb. I took my gun and shot Snape and Lupin a gazillion times. And they both started screaming. And the camera broke. Suddenly, Dumbledore ran in. Ebony, it has been revealed that someone has... No! He shouted, looking at Snape and Lupin, and then waved his wand. And suddenly... Hagrid ran outside on his broom and said, Everyone, we need to talk. What do you know, Hagrid? You're just a little Hogwarts student. I may be a Hogwarts student, Hagrid paused angrily. But I am also a Satanist! This cannot be, Snap said in a crisp voice, as blood dripped from his hand where Dumbledore's wand had shot him. What? When did- what? Dude, I'm beyond lost at this point. There must be other factors. You don't have any, I yelled in madly. Lupin held up the camera, triumph elephantly. The lens may be ruined, but the tape is still there. I felt faint, more than I normally do, like how it feels when you do not drink enough blood. Why are you doing this? Lupin said angrily. Because, because, Hargid said as he paused in the air dramatically, waving his wand in the air. Then swooped he in, singing to the tune of a gothic version of a song by 50 Cent. <laughs> because you're gothic, Snap asked in a little afraid voice, because he was afraid it meant he was connected with Satan. Because I love her. Chapter 12, author's note. Stop F, R, ing, okay? Hargid is a pedo to a lot of people in American schools. Ah, uh, like that, I wanted to address the issue. How do you know, Snap? 
Iant Kristen plus Hagrid isn't really in love with Ebony, that was Cedric, okay? I was about to slit my wrists again, with a silver knife that Drago had given me in case anything happened to him. No! I thought it was Hagrid, but it was Vampire. He started to scream. Oh my fucking god, no! My scar hurts! And then his eyes rolled up. You could only see his red whites. I stopped. How did you know? I saw it, and my scar turned back into a lightning bolt. No! I ran up closer. I thought you didn't have a scar anymore, I shouted. I do, but Diabolo changed it into a pentagram for me, and I always cover it up with foundation, <laughs> I said back. Anyway, my scar hurt, and it turned back into the lightning bolt. Save me! Then I had a vision of what was happening to Draco. Volfemort has him bondage. Anyway, I was in the school nurse's office now, recovering from my slit wrists. Snap and Lupin and ha was there too. They were going to St. Mango's after they, <laughs> after they recovered because there were pedophiles and you can't have those f***ing pervs teaching in a school with lots of hot girls. Dumbledore had constipated the Sidio camera. They took off me naked. I put up my middle finger at them. Anyway, Hagrid came into the hospital bed holding a bouquet of pink roses. Enobi, I need to tell you something, Nig. I said in a V-serious voice, giving her the roses. F*** off, I told him. You know I hate the f***ing color pink anyway. And I don't like f***ed up preps like you, I snapped. Hagrid had been mean to me before for being gothic. No, Enobi. Hagrid says, those are not roses. What, are they goths too, you poser prep? I asked because I was angry that he had bought me pink roses. I saved your life! I yelled angrily. No you didn't, I replied. You saved me from getting a Paris Hilton pee video made from your shower scene and being viewed by Snape and Lupin, who masturbated. See, is that spelled wrong? Whatever, I yelled angrily. He pointed his wand at the pink roses. These aren't roses. He suddenly looked at them with an evil look in his eye and muttered, Well, if you wanted honesty, that's all you had to say. That's not a spell. That's a My Chemical Romance song. I corrected him wisely. I know. I was just warming up my vocal cordes. Then he screamed. Petulus Marengo mi cremil Romazio. For all you cool gothic My Chemical Romance fans out there, that is a tribute. Especially for Raven. I love you, girl. In my opinion, Nato Okeo. And then the roses turn into a huge black flame floating in the middle of the air. And it was black. And I knew he wasn't a prep. Okay, I believe you now. What the fuck is Draco? Hair grid rolled his eyes. I looked into the balls of flame, but I could see nothing. You see, Enabi, Dumbledore said, watching the two of us watching the flame, <laughs> to see what is into flims. Ha <laughs> ha you reviewers flames, get it? You must find yourself first, Kay. No, I have find myself, okay, you mean old man, Hargrid yelled. Dumbledore looked shocked. I guess he didn't have a headache, or else he would have said something back. <laughs> Hargrid stormed off back into his bed. Anyway, when I got better, I went upstairs and put on a black leather mini dress that was all ripped on the ends with lace on it. Then I put on some corset stuff on the front, then I put on some black fishnets and black high-heeled boots with pictures of Billy Joe Armstrong on them. I put my hair all out around me so I looked like Samara from the ring. If you don't know who she is, you are prep, so f*** off. So I put on blood red lipstick, black eyeliner, and black lip gloss. You look kawaii, girl. But Ludi Mary said sadly. Fangs. Get it? You do too. I said sadly. But I was still upset. 
I slit both my wrists, feeling totally depressed, and I sucked out all the blood. I cried again in my bath, and I put the shades on so Snap and Lupin couldn't spy on me this time. I went to some classes. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. Vampire was in the hair of magical magic creatures. He looked all depressed because Draco had disappeared and he had used to be in love with Draco. He was sucking some blood from a Hufflepuff. Hi, he said in a depressed way. Hi back, I said in a wickily sad way. We both looked at each other for some time. Harry had beautiful red gothic eyes, so much like Draco's. Then we jumped on each other and started screwing each other. <laughs> Horny simpletons! shouted Professor McGargle, who was watching us, and so was everyone else. Vampire, you f***er, I started slapping him. Stop trying to screw me. You know I love Draco, I shouted, then I ran away angrily. Chapter 13. Vampire and I run up the stairs looking for Dumbledore. We were so scared. Dumbledore! Dumbledore! We both yelled. Dumbledore came there. What is it that you want now, you despicable snobs? He asked angrily. Voldemort has Draco! We shouted at the same time. He laughed in an evil voice. <laughs> no, no, don't! don't. We, we need, need to, to save, save Draco. Draco! We begged. No, he said meanly. I don't give a darn what Voldemort does to Draco. Not after how much he misbehaved in school, especially with you, Ebony, he said while he frowned looking at me. Besides, I never liked him that much anyway. Then he walked away. Vampire started crying. My Draco! He moaned. Author's note. Don't you think gay guys are like so hot? It's okay. I tried to help him, but that didn't stop him. He started to cry tears of blood. And then he had a brainstorm. I had an idea! He exclaimed. What? I asked him. You'll see, he said. He took out his wand and did a spell. Then, suddenly, we were in Voldemort's lair! We ran with our wands out, just as we heard the croon voice say, a la cadavra. It was Voldemort. <laughs> Chapter 14. Author's note. F*** off preps, okay? Raven Fangs for helping again. I'm sorry I couldn't update, but I was depressed and had to go to the hospital because I slit my wrists. P.S. I'm not updating till I give you my ten good reviews. Warning, some of this chapter is extremely scray. The or excretion advised. We ran into where Voldemort was. It turned out that Voldemort wasn't there. Instead, the fat guy who killed Cedric was. Draco was there crying tears of blood. Snake Tail was torturing him. People live their authentic lives. Vampire and I ran in front of the Snake Tail. Read my sight, you despicable preps! He shouted as we started shooting him with the gun. He then suddenly, he looked at me, and he fell down with a lovey-dovey look in his eyes. Doc, he said. <laughs> in this, he is 16 years old, so he's not a pedophile, okay? Huh? I asked. Inobi, I love you. Will you have sex with me? Asked Snake Tail. <laughs> I started laughing rudely. What the f***? You torture my boyfriend, and then you expect me to f*** you? God, you are so up, you fucking bastard, I said angrily, and then I stabbed him in the heart. Blood poured out like a fountain. No! He screamed. He started screaming and running around. Then he fell down and died. I burst into tears, sadly. Snake Tail, what art thou doing? called Voldemort. Then he started coming! We could hear his high heels clacking to us. So we got on our broomsticks and we flew to Hogwarts. We went to my room. Vampire went away. There I started crying. What's wrong, honey? Asked Draco, taking off his clothes so we could screw. He had a sex pack. Get it? Because he's so sexy. 
and a really huge you-know-what and everything. It's so unfair, I yielded. Why can't I just be ugly or plain like all the other girls and preps here except for Baludi Mary because she's not ugly or anything. Why would you want to be ugly? I don't like the preps anyway. They're such f***ing sluts, answered Draco. Yeah, but everyone is in love with me. Like Snape and Lupin took a video of me naked. Hagrid says he's in love with me. Vampires like me. And now even Snake Tail is in love with me. I just want to be with you, okay, Draco? Why couldn't Satan have made me less beautiful? I shouted angrily. Author's note. Don't worry. Enobi isn't a snob or anything, but a lot of people have told her she's pretty. I'm good at too many things. Why can't I just be normal? It's a f***ing curse. I shouted and then I ran away. Chapter 15. Author's note. Stop flaming, okay? By the way, you suck from no on every time someone flams me, I'm gonna slit my wrists. Fangs to Raven for helping. Ebony, Ebony, shouted Draco sadly. No, please, come back. But I was too mad. Whatever, now you can go and have sex with Vampire, I shouted. I stormed into my room and closed my black door with the blood red key. Then I looked at my black good Charlotte watch and noticed that it was time to go to biology. I put on a short ripped black gothic dress that said anarchy on the front in blood red letters and it was all ripped and with a spiky belt. Under that I put on ripped black fishnets and boots that said Joel all over them in blood red letters. I put my ebony black hair out. Anyway, I went downstairs feeling all sad and depressed as usual. I did some advanced biology work. I was turning a bloody pentagram into a black guitar. Suddenly the guitar turned to Draco. Inobi, I love you, I shouted sadly. I do not care what those fucker preps and posers think. You're the most beautiful girl in the world. Before I met you, I used to want to commit suicide all the time. Now I just want to f***ing be with you. I f***ing love you. Then he started to sing The Chronicles of Life and Death. We considered it our song now, because we fell in love when Joel was singing it. Oh my f***. God, I said after he was finished. Some f***ing preps stared at us, but I just stuck my middle finger up at them. They were covered in black nail polish and were intertwined with Draco's now. I love you, I said, and then we started to kiss. Then we went away holding hands. Lupin shouted at us, but he stopped because everyone was clapping by how sexy we looked together. Then I saw a poster saying that MCR would have a concert in Hogsmeade right then. We looked at each other all shocked. And then we went together. Aww. To be continued. <laughs> question mark? Like bloody question mark. <laughs> Next time on My Immortal. <laughs> Ebony and Draco go to the My Chemical Romance concert. But they're in for a big surprise. <laughs>
He shot at a spell, and Vladimir ran away. It was dumbly dull. Chapter 18. Author's note. I said stop flaming. If you do, then you are a f prep. Thanks to Raven for the help and stuff. You rock. And you are not a prep. Thanks for Miss Weather. P.S. The other reason Dumbledore swore is cause he trin to be gothic so dear. I woke up the next day in my coffin. I walked out of it and put on some black eyeliner, black eyeshadow, and blood bed lipstick. The night before, Draco and I ran back to the skull. Get it? Skull cause I'm gothic and like death. Dumbledore chased Vladimir away. We flew there on our brooms. Mine was black and the broom stuff was blood red. <laughs> the broom stuff? <laughs> there was lace all over it. Draco had a black MCR boom. We went back to our rooms and we had you know what to a Lincoln Park song. Well anyway, I went back to the Great Hall. There all the walls were painted black and the tables were black too. But you could see there was pink pant underneath the black pant. There were pastors of poser bands everywhere like Ashley Simpson and the Backstreet Boys. What the f I shouted. Vampire, Dracula, and Draco came. We started to talk about who was sexier. Mikey or Gerard Way or Billy Joe Armstrong. The boys joined in because they were by. Those guys are so f***ing hot! Naval was saying, as suddenly, a gothic old man with a black beard and everything came. Dumbledore? Dumbledore? We all gasped. What the f***? I shouted angrily. I thought he was just wearing that to scare Volsimort. Hello, everyone, he said happily. As you can see, I gave the room a makeover. Oh, what ya do you think about it? Everyone from the poser table in Gryffindor started to cheer. Well, we goths just looked at each other, all disfusted, and shook our heads. We couldn't believe what a poser he was. By the way, you can call me Albert. He called as we left to our classes. What a f***ing poser! Draco shouted angrily as we we to transformation. We were holding hands. Vampire looked really jealous. I could see him crying blood in a gothic way. Get it? Like Gerard. But I didn't say anything. I bet he's having a midlife crisis, Willow shouted. I was so f***ing angry. Chapter 20. I said, I don't care what you think. Stop flaming, okay, preps. Thanks to Raven for the help. Oh, yeah, and by the way, I'll be on vacation in Transylvania for the next three days, so do not expect updates. I slit my wrists while I moshed MCR in my bedroom all night, feeling excited. Suddenly, someone knocked on the door. I got all mad and turned it off. But sacredly, I hopped inside that it was Draco so that we could do it again. It was Lupin. Are you gonna come me or what? I yelled. I was allowed to say that because Dumbledore had told us to be careful around him and Snape since he was a pig. No, actually. Get it? Hell. Can I borrow some condemns? He growled angrily. Yes, yeah, so you. Uh huh? I shouted sarcastically. F he said, gong away. Well, anyway, I put on some black <laughs> eyeshadow, black eyeliner, and some black lipstick and white foundation. Then I went. <laughs> then I gasped. Snake and Lupin were in the middle of the empty hall doing it, and Dobby was watching. Oh my, oh my god, you god, ludicrous, ludicrous idiot. idiot. They both shooted angrily when they saw me. Dobby ran away crying. <laughs> Normally, I would have been turned on. I love seeing guys do it. But both of them were f***ing preps. What the f***? Is this why you wanted condoms? I asked sarcastically. See, I spelled that. Only you wouldn't give them to me, Lumpkin shouted angrily. Well, you should have told me, I replied. You dimwit. Snake began to shoot angrily. And then, I took out my black camera and took a pic of them. You could see that they were naked and everything. Well, excuse me. Well, excuse me. They both shouted angrily. What was that all about? It was to blackmail you, I snarked. So now next time you see me doing it with my boyfriend, you can't f 
f***ing rat me out, or I'll show this to Dumbledore. So f*** off, you bastards. I started to run. They chased me, but I threw my wound at them, and they tripped over it. Well, anyway, I went outside and there was Vampire, looking extremely f***ing hot. What the f***? Weird Draco, I asked him. Oh, he's being a f***ing bastard. He told me he wouldn't come, Vampire said, shaking his head. You wanna come with me? To the concert? Then, he showed me his flying car. <laughs> I gasped. It was a black car. <laughs> he said his dog father, Sirius Black, had given it to him. The license plate on the front said MCR666 on it. And the license plate on the back said Inobi. I gasped. We flew to the concert hall. MCR were there, playing. Oh. Vampire and I began to make out, moshing to the music. I gasped, looking at the band. I almost had an orgasm. And then I heard some crying. I turned and saw Draco crying in a corner. Author's note. F*** you, okay? You f***ing suck. It's not my fault if it's spelt wrong, okay? Cause dead raven, cause it f*** you preps. Uh, was Soz Raven Fangs for the help? By the way, Transylvania rocks rad. I got to go to the castle where Dracula was filmed. Draco was crying in the common room. Draco, are you okay? I asked in a gothic voice. No, I'm not, you f***ing bitch! He shouted angrily. He started to run out of the place in a suicidal way. <laughs> I stated to cry, because I was afraid he would commit suicide. It's okay, Anobi, said Vampire comfortly. I'll make him feel better. You mean you'll go f*** him, won't you? I shouted angrily. Then I ran to get Draco. Vampire came too. Draco, please come. He began to cry. Tears of blood came down his pale face. <laughs> I was so turned on, because I love sensitive bi guys. If you're a homophone, then f*** off. And then, we heard some footsteps. Vampire got out his black invincibility coke. We both got <laughs> under it. We saw the janitor, Mr. Norris, there, shouting angrily with a flashlight in his hand. Who's there? He shouted angrily. We saw filth come. He went under the invisibility cloak and started to meow loudly. Is anyone there? Yelled Mr. Norris. No f you preppy little posed son of a bitch. Vampire said under his breast in a disgusted way. Excuse me? Excuse me? Who said that? Yelled Mr. Norris. Then he heard Filch meow. Wow. Filch, is there anyone under the cloak? <laughs> he asked. Filth nodded. And then, Vampire. French to me. He did it just as Mr. Norris was taking off the cloak. What the? He yelled. But it was too late, because now we were ruining away from him. And then we s <laughs> and then we saw Draco crying and busting into tears and slitting his wrists outside of the school. <laughs> Draco, I cried. Are you okay? I guess though. Draco weeped. Draco and I decided to watch Lake Placid on the gothic red bed together. As I was about to put in the video, my eyes rolled up and suddenly I had a vision of something that was happening now. Ad begin. What's that? That's the FBI. We've just sent a record of your internet history to your family and friends and acquaintances for them to laugh at. Now your life is over. This wouldn't have happened if you had got NordVPN. Keep those degenerate websites a secret. Look at this guy, he uses NordVPN. Look how happy he is. He's fucking ecstatic. It's so simple and clean. There's no complicated setup or technical stuff. It comes with unlimited bandwidth. You can even access international content. For example, let's go to Japan. Oh dear. It took me almost two months to make these videos and it wouldn't have been possible without NordVPN. You get access to more content and I get a kickback when you sign up. So remember to smash that link button with your parents credit card in the description below. 
But what is a VPN, you may ask? Add over. Chapter 22. Well, anyway, I woke up the next day. I was wearing black lacy leather pajamas. Then I gasped. Standing in front of me were Bloody Mary, Vampire, Diablo, Draco, Dracula, and Willow. I opened my crimson eyes. Willow was wearing a tight black leather top with pictures of bloody roses all over it. Vampire was wearing a baggy simple plan t-shirt. So were Crab and Goyle. Oh my f***ing god, I yelled in as I jumped up. Why the f*** are you all here? Inobi, something's really f***ed up, Draco said. Okay, but I need to put on my f clothes first, I shouted angrily. It's alright. We have to go now, and you look kawaii anyway. You're so f beautiful, Draco said in a sexy voice. Oh, right, I said smiling. But you have to tell me why you're being all erective. I will, I will, he said. So I just put on some black eyeliner, black lipstick, and red eyeshadow, and white foundation. Then I came. <laughs> we all went outside the Great Hall and looked in from a window. Inside the Great Hall, we could see Dumbledore. Cornelia Fudge was there shouting at Dumbledore. Doris Rumbridge was there too. You are not fit to be the principal any longer, yelled Rumbridge. You're too old. And your Alzheimer's is dangerous! You must retry, or Voldemort will kill your students! Very well, Dumbledore said angrily. But we cannot do this. We cannot close the school. There is only one person who is capable of killing Voldemort, and she is in the school. And her name is... Inoni, <laughs> Darkness, <laughs> Dementia, <laughs> Raven, Way. Draco, Cra <laughs> Draco Crab, Goyle, Darkness, Vampire, and Baludi Mary looked at each other. I gasped. Chapter 23. Author's note. Uh, <laughs> shut the f*** up, bitch. That sums up this whole thing the best. I opened the door, and Professor Rumbridge and Cornelia Fudge stopped out angrily. I ate some Count Chocolate and drank some blood from a cup. Then I heard someone shooting angrily. I looked behind me. It was Vampire. He and Draco were shooting at each other. I wanna shit next to her! No, I do! Shouted. No, she doesn't f***ing like you, you son of a bitch! yelled Draco. No f*** you, because she leaves me, not you! shouted Vampire. And then, he jumped on Draco. No, not in that way, you perv. They started to fight and beat up each other. Dumbledore yelled at them, but they didn't stop. All of a sudden, a terrible man with red eyes and no nose flew in on a broomstick. He had no nose and was wearing a grey robe. All of the glass in the window flew through, fell apart. Brittany, that crap, started to cry. <laughs> Vampire and Draco stopped fighting. I shopped eating. The room fell silent. Volzimort! Ebobi! Ebony! He said evilly in his raspy voice. Thou hath failed your mission! Now I shall kill thou, and I shall kill Vampire as well, if thou dost not kill him before then, I shall kill Draco too. Uh, please, don't make me kill him, please, I begged. No, he laughed crudely. Kill him? Or I shall kill him anyway! Then he flew away cackling. I bust into tears. Suddenly, my eyes rolled up so they looked all cool and gothic. 
I said I see a black gothic skull and a pentagram. Sire, our dads have been shot, Draco said. Die! Think again, you f muggle poser! Thanks again to NordVPN. NordVPN slash internet historian for 77% off. Here we go. Draco and Vampire came to contort me. Suddenly, <laughs> <laughs> suddenly my eyes rolled up so they looked all cool and gothic. N no. <laughs> I screamed sexily. Suddenly I locked up and stopped having the vision. Ebony, Ebony, are you alright? Asked Draco in a worried voice. Yeah, yeah, I said sadly as I got up. Everything's alright, Anobi, said Vampire, all sensitive. No, it's not, I shouted angrily. Tears of blood went down my face. Oh my fucking god, what if I'm getting possessed like in the ring 2? It's okay, girl, said Blue to Mary. Maybe you should ask Professor Sinister about what the visions mean, though. <laughs> okay, bitch, I said sadly, <laughs> and then we went. Konnichiwa, everybody. Come in, said the Professor Sinister in Japanese. She smelled at me with her gothic black lipstick. She had long, dead black hair with blood-red tips and red eyes. She's the coolest fucking teacher ever. I raced my hand. I was wearing some black nail polish with red pentagrams on it. What is it, Sister? Oh, I love your nail polish. Where did you get it? Hot Topic? Yeah, I answered. All the preps who didn't know what Hot Topic was gave me weird looks. I gave them the middle finger. Well, I have to talk to you about some things. When do you want to do it? Oh, about the now, she asked. Okay, I said. Okay, Corazzo this missed everyone, Professor Trevor said as she let everyone go. Okay, I'm having lots of visions, I said in a worried voice. I'm so worried, is Draco going to die? Well, she gave me a black cryptal ball to look in. I looked at it. What do you see? She asked. <laughs> I said I see a black gothic skull and a pentagram. Suddenly, there was a knock at the door. I looked at it. It was Draco. He was looking really sexy, wearing a black leather facet, a black gothic Lincoln Park t-shirt, and black Congress shoes. Okay, you can go now see what I want to, said the Professor Sinister. Bye, bitch, I said, waving. Chapter 25. Author's note. Stop flaming, okay? If you don't, then I'll tell Justin to beat you up, and I'll tell all the readers to put <laughs> viruses on your computer. F*** you, Raven Fangs for the help. I was so excited. I followed Draco, wondering if we were going to do it again. We went outside, and then we went into Draco's black car. He started to fly the car into a tree. We went on top of it. Draco put on some MCR. We started tilling off each other's clothes fervently. He took off my black thong and my black leather bar. I took off his black boxes. Then he put his throbbing you-know-what into my tool, sexily. Oh my fucking god, Draco, Draco. I screamed, having an orgasm. We stated French passively. Suddenly, I fell asleep. I started having a dream. In it, a black guy was shooting two gothic men with black long hair. No! Please don't fucking kill us! They flee him. Well, he just kept shooting them. No! Oh my fucking god, I shouted in a scared voice. Ebony, what's wrong? Draco asked me as I woke up, opening my icy blue eyes. Oh, I started to cry, and tears of blood went down my face. I told Draco to call Vampire. He did with his black Lincoln Park mobile. But the worst thing was who the people who were shot in the dream were. Lucian and Sirius. Chapter 26 
A few mutates later, Vampire came to the tree. He was wearing a black leather jacket, black leather pants, and a good Charlotte t-shirt. Hi, Vampire, I said flirtily as I started to sob. Draco hugged me sexily, triumphed to comfort me. I started to cry tears of blood and then told them what happened. Now come on, we have to tell Dumbledore. We ran out of the tree and into the castle. Dumbledore was sitting in his office. Sire, our dads have been shot, Draco said, while we whipped some tears from his white face. Inobi had a vision in a dream. Dumbledore started to goggle. <laughs> and how do you expect me to know Ebony's not divisional? I glared at Dumbledore. Look, mother fucker, he said angrily as Dumbledore gasped. See, is that tooth of cracker? <laughs> you know very well that I'm not decisional. Now get some fucking people out there to look for Ceres and Lucian, Ponto. Okay, he said in an intimidated voice. Where are they? I thought about it. Then all of a sudden, Longden. I said. I told him which street. He went and called some people and did some stuff. After a few mistunes, he came back and said people were going out to look for them. Suddenly, Sirius and Lucian came in on stretches, and Professor Sinister was behind them. Chapter 27. Vampires will never hurt you. Everyone in the room stated to cry happily. I had saved them. What? <laughs> What Draco, Lucian, Sirius Bond, Vampire all came to hug me. The nurse started to give them medicine. Mm, come on, Ebony. Said the professor, said the truth. I have to tell you the f***ing perdition. I locked at Lucian, Seraphs, Drake and Vampire. They nodded. I smelled happily and went into a dark room. <laughs> I had changed. Professor Sinister took out some black cards. She started to look into a black crucible ball. She said, Who is Terra? Terra! I see Draco times are near. She said the battery. She peered into the balls. You see, you must go back in time, Ru. She took out a time toner like Bloody Mary had. When the Voldemort was in Hogwarts, uh, before he became powerful, he got his hearth broken. Now do you think he would still become a Voxamort uh, if he was in a rover? I shook my head. You must go back in time and uh, said I will see him. It is the only way. If he is still evil, then you must kill him. Okay, I said sadly. I went outside again, sadly. Chapter 28. What, what f***ing happened? happened? Asked Draco and Vampire. Yeah, yeah what happened? What happened? <laughs> Asked everyone else. The problem is, I have to seduce Volsamort. I'll have to go back. In time. Draco started to cry sadly. Vampire hugged him. It's okay, Ibobi, <laughs> he said finally. But what about me? You're not gonna break up or anything, are you? Of course not, I gasped. Really? he asked. Sure, I said. We French sexily. Vampire looked at us longingly. Then... I took off Draco's My Chemical Romance shrift and seductively took off his pants. He was hung like a Stallone. He had replaced the vampire tattoo that said Anobi on it. Black roses were around it. I gasped. He looked exactly like Gerard Way. Vampire took a video camera. I had said it was okay before. I took off my clothes and we were in for the ride of our lives. We started Frenching as we climbed into the coffin. He put his Spock in my you-know-what, and passively, we did it. I love you, Abobi. Oh, let me feel you. I need to feel you, he screamed as we got an orgasm. 
We watched Vampire filmed everything perfectly. Suddenly. What the f*** are, are you doing? doing? It, it was Snoop and Professor McGoggle. Chapter 29. Oh my Satan! We screamed as we jumped out of the coffin. Snap and Professor McGoonagle started to shoot at us angrily. Come now! We did it guiltily. We left the room putting on our clothes. Snoop garbed the caramel and put it in his pocket. Hey, what the fuck? Vampire shoot it angrily? Yeah, buster! What the fuck are you going to do with the fucking camera? Draco demanded, all protected. Oh, sorry. Ha <laughs> ha, Snoop laughed meanly. Ha 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 ha. Shut your mouth, you insolent fools! Yelled Professor McGoggle. She made us come into a weird room with white stones all around it. Where's Draco started to cry all sexy and sexative. Get it? Because he's a sex bomb, lol. And then, he and Snoop both took out guns using magic. They started to shoot each other angrily. None of the ballots got on each other yet. I took out my wand. Crossio, I shout. Snape started to scram. He dropped the gun. But it was too late. Both of them had run out of ballets. I stopped to curse. Professor McGoogle did a spell so that they were all chained up. She took out a box of tools. Then she said, Okay, Cerberus, I'm going to go now. She left. Snap started to laugh evilly. Vampire started to cry. <laughs> It's okay, Anobi, said Draco. Evergreen will be all right. Remember the city o you took of Snake. Snape laughed again. <laughs> and then he took out some whips. No! We screamed sadly. <laughs> he took out a camera anvily. Then he came towards Darko. He took some stones out of his pocket. He put the stones around Draco and knit a candle. What the fuck are you doing? I shouted angrily. Snoop laughed meanly. <laughs> he pulled down his pants. I gasped. <gasps> there was a dork mark on his you know what. He waved his wand and a knife came. He gave the knife to me. You must stab Vampire, he said to me. If you don't, then I'll wrap Draco. No, you fucking bastard, I yielded. Snape laughed angrily. <laughs> he started to pray to Voldemort. He started to do an incapacitation dance around the strokes whipping Draco and Vampire. Suddenly, an idea I had. I closed my eyes and using my vampire powers, I sent a telepathic massage to Draco and Vampire so that they would distract Snape. Dumbledore will get you, Draco shoot it. Yeah, just wait until the mystery find out. God damn it. Vampire yelled. Meanwhile, I took out my wand. You ridiculous Donderhead. Snoop yielded. He took off. All of Draco's clothes, yeah, just as he was about to rape it. Crossio, I shitted, pointing my wound. <laughs> Snoop screamed and started running around ah, the room screaming. Ah, Meanwhile, motherfucker, I... what the fuck? Ah, <laughs> that's just hot. Meanwhile, I grabbed my black mobile and sent a text to Sirius. I stopped doing Crucio. You dunderhead. Shooted Snape, but suddenly, Cerverus came. Snake put the whip behind his back. Oh, oh, hello, Serv. I was just teaching them something. He lied. But suddenly, Lucian and Professor Trevelry came into the room, and they and Sirius unlocked the chains and put them around Snap. I always knew you were on Voldemort's side, you son of a bitka. Sirius said to Snape. No, I'm not. I was teaching them something. Snape clammed. Oh, f***ing yeah. 
And then, a big black car that said 666 on the license plate flew straight through the windows. And Snap was in it. Chapter 44. Author's Note. Well, I have nothing to say, but Everett, stop glamming, okay? If any gothic people are reading this, then you rock. Oh my god, I still can't wait for the movie. Tom Flatten is so hot. Lol, I hop Harry will become gothic, because my friend told me he is really emo in this book. OMFG, I'm leaving W pretty soon, can't wait. This will probably be the last chapter until I come back. That's me car! Shoot it, Draco, angrily. But suddenly, it was revealed who was in the car. It was... Voldemort! Now I shall kill the all! Thunder came in the room. No, please don't kill us, pleaded Vampire. My god, look at this casting call. Suddenly, Willow, Baludi Mary, Diablo, Ginny, Drocula, Fred, and George, Hagrid, McGonagall, Dumbledore, Sirius, and Lucian all ran in. What is the meaning of this? And Voldemort looked away, because Dumbledore is the only wizard that he is scared of. He did a spell, and suddenly his broomstick came to him sexily. Voldemort flew above the roof evilly on his broomstick. Oh my goth! Slugborn gasped. Get it? Cause I'm gothic. The Dark Lord shall kill all of you. Then you must submit to him, Snake ejaculated menacingly. Cruciatus! screamed Harry. But the sparks from his wand only hit Draco's car. It fell down. Snap quickly crawled out of it and picked up the studio camera. Oh my fucking god, I cried, because the video of me in the bathroom. The video of me doing it with Draco. If you kill me, then these videos will be shown to everyone in the skull. Then you can just be like that gothic girl, Paris Hilton. <laughs> he, he laughed meanly. No, I screamed. I saw too, she's gonna show everyone to Pictor! Harry shouted angrily. Shut up! Lumpkin roared. Foolish ignoramuses! Yielded Voldemort from his broomstick. Thou shall all die soon! Die! Think again, you fucking muggle poser! Harry yelled. And then he and Diablo and Nabel both took out black guns. But Voldemort took out his own one. You guys are in a Latin standoff, I shouted desperately. Echo Neville's wand, cried Voldemort. It suddenly, Neville's wand was in his hands. Now I shall kill thee all, and Ebony, you will die. He made lighting come all over the place. Save us, Ebony! Dumbledark cried. I cried sexily. I just wanted to go to the common room and slip my wrists with my friends as we watched Shark Attack 3 and Saw 2 and do it with Draco. But I knew I had to do something more impotent. <laughs> Abracadabra! I is that the end? That is the end. Holy shit. And that's it. 80 minutes of incomprehensible drivel. Thank you for tolerating it. It's all just going to be notifications and thanks from here on, so feel free to quietly walk out the door. Um, I'll do a short video at some stage on the origins of the author. I think there's quite an interesting story there. There have been a few people to claim to be Tara Gillespie, but uh, I'm not too confident in any of them, to be honest. Um, I'm going to do more of these because, frankly, they're fun. And there are a couple stories in particular that, that need to be brought to the big screen. Um, uh, one of them is Sonic High School, uh, and the other is... Jeff the Killer, and Jeff the Killer in particular, because somehow it has risen to be one of the most 
popular creepypastas of all time, and it is absolutely one of the worst quality. So I'm hoping to change a few hearts and minds on that. Right, now shout outs. Shout out to Sorry TV. Thanks very much for doing this and, and for your fantastic range of characters. Um, uh, an apology to Chris Reagan. He had uh, a spot in the final scene, actually. In chapter 39, there's this hacker character that supposedly hacks into Tara Gillespie's account and does all these things to the narrative that's very meta. And I got him to record the lines and everything, and he did a good job, but um, it just didn't work in the flow, and it looked as though we had written this thing into the script rather than actually already having been there. So uh, I just cut the whole thing out. By the way, this is also an abridged version. The proper version is twice in length, and features a subplot involving a teenage heartthrob love interest, Tom Riddle, um, if you're looking for more. What else have we got? Uh, do, oh, no, Nord, Nord VPN, if I haven't mentioned them. Um, and that's about it. Fangs.